Hello everyone, it's David, and I'm back for the second video of our YouTube series on restoring delight in the Word of God. And so thanks for watching the first one, thanks for joining us for this one. And um, this, this video, I just wanted to a little bit highlight hunger, because hunger is going to fuel the effectiveness of, of your pursuit of the Lord and searching for Him in the Scriptures. And so again, this isn't just the mere investigation of information, but this is really um, the way that God has uh, ordained for us as humans to come and encounter Him in His Word, and He'll cause His Word to come alive. And so there's nothing on earth you can read, no sermon or, or teaching that you can listen to with just in an unfiltered way. I hope even as you watch this video, you just have your guard up and you're suspect of everything that I'm saying and that you'll go to the Word and, and search things out to see if they're really true or not. I believe that the Lord's called us into finding Him, encountering Him, in his word and so uh, today I wanted to talk about hunger and share a little bit of, of that because that's really what fueled uh, my pursuit to just know him more was uh, just I had this insatiable hunger for more and it's still there and I just keep giving myself to pressing in I've, I've heard sometimes guys or, or gals will say you know I've read through the Bible already I, I understand what's in there I, I, I get the story and you know so I don't I don't need to read the Bible but I would just challenge that type of thinking because what an outright denial of uh, his beauty, his glory, and, and his eternity. If the eternal God really wrote the Bible and uh, hid treasures of who he was in there, then uh, he's gonna be blowing our minds with that one book for ages to come. So in my own pursuit of the Lord, really just hunger has been the fuel that's kept me going and going and going. And the great thing about just encountering the Lord is the more you encounter him, the hungrier you get and so it's quite the opposite you know just in our, our natural bodies if you don't eat over a period of time you get hungry but it's it's not the same way with the Lord and, and his word and so uh, if you want to stir hunger for the Lord and you want to stir hunger for the word then <laughs> go and eat and the more you eat you'll get hungry and so uh, you know one of the biggest fruits of the Lord working in my life has beyond seeing uh, miracles uh, when I pray for people, beyond you know just own personal answered prayer, beyond uh, so many other things I can name. But the biggest thing really has been an insatiable hunger for just more of God, more of God, constantly more of God. And so people ask me and they're like, well, where do you go to Bible school and, or, or, uh, or seminary or something? I'm like, no, I actually didn't do all that. I skipped all that. My degrees are in uh, completely unrelated fields. And so even now I'm just, I'm sitting in front of my own personal library that I have, and it to me it's it's not a, a a prideful thing at all. My heart is like that is such a miracle that the Lord has has worked in me to be able to give myself to reading more and more about Him and searching the Scriptures and and accumulating the tools to be able to search the Scriptures effectively um, has just been a whole part of just I'm hungry for the guy. I want to get to know him and uh, the. People often ask me, I'm like, do I need prayer for anything? I'm like, I just want to know him more. And uh, it seems kind of weird unless you know him, and then you're like, I get it. That's, that's actually a pretty deep prayer request. So I just wanted to ask this video to say, how hungry are you? Because the hunger for the Word is going to restore delight back in the Word. And uh, a couple passages come to mind. I'm not going to tell you where you're at, because I want you to look him up if you're serious about this thing. But there was a, a, a time in, in Israel's history when you know they're going through spiritual reform and, and the idolatrous uh, practices are being stopped, idols are being torn down, and, and uh, altars that were built to idols were being smashed down. And so they're going, the nation's going through this time of what looked like a seemingly uh, good reform because uh, all these exterior things uh, were happening, but it was because of the heart of the good king, but the heart of the people never never shifted and actually God sent one of his prophets in there to plead with them to return back to me and uh, he even starts his message through this prophet he says I remember the days of your youth when you were young and you were running after me in the wilderness and just rem reminiscing on those early days when they were just running together in love and he's like I miss that I miss you I want you to return to me and uh, and because they kept their hearts from the Lord, even though they had all this external stuff going, judgment was still on the way. And so before judgment, he says, I miss you. And then he starts warning them on, on what's going to happen because the land is crying out for justice. And uh, 
God is uh, lamenting through this prophet. And he says, who can I speak and give warning to? Because their ears are shut, they cannot listen. And it says, because they don't delight in the word of God. And so the issue of this prophet's day was delighting in the word of God. The people did not really delight in the word. They love to have all this exterior stuff going on, but really in their heart of hearts, they didn't delight in the word of God. And look deeper than that, they weren't hungry for it. And so if we can restore hunger, we can restore delight. And the hunger is gonna be restored as you cry out for it and give yourself to reading the Bible and just asking the Lord to encounter you. Another passage that comes to mind is in, in the Psalms where it says, Bless is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by rivers that brings forth its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. I believe that the Lord wants to bless his people and give his people good things, but we've lost emphasis on delighting yourself in the Lord and we put emphasis on just the Lord wants to bless you in this this area he wants to, to give you this thing he wants you to walk in more health more favor and uh, and more prosperity and we completely disconnect the message of delight in the Word of God from the message of blessing that he wants to bring in his his children's life but I would admonish you like we need to restore the hunger to restore the delight in the Word of God and when there's a true delight in, in the Lord He'll take care of you. One of our favorite passages in, in Psalm 91 is a, a passage of, of protection and what the Lord's going to uh, keep his children from. But in the middle of that passage, he says, because he or because that person delights in me, that's why I will save him. That's why we've got to get verse one in there right. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We've got to get back to where we can dwell in the secret place no matter where we're at, if we're even in our quiet time driving down the road or at work, being able to have that secret place of communion with the Lord. And nothing's going to fuel that prayer life like when you're filled with the Word. And so I ask you, how hungry are you for Him? How hungry are you to encounter God for real? Not just give a mental assent to, okay, I agree with these historical facts, I believe on these faith principles, but to really believe in your heart and go after him like he is worth it. So even if you're one that's like, I've read the Bible already, I, I understand it, I, I would challenge you to, to press in for more and, and ask the Lord for more. I mean, these pages are thick because he lives inside of there. And there's so much more he wants to show you. If you would just humble yourself and say, Lord, teach me, show me more about yourself. Even though I think I've got it, just hit delete on everything that you think you know and press in for more because he's bigger than your idea of him. And he's more beautiful than anything we can surround ourselves to be entertained with.